Are you willing to undertake a dangerous mission behind the enemy lines, knowing you may never return alive? What you have just heard is the question asked during the war to agents of the OSS, ordinary citizens who to this question answered, yes. This is Cloak and Dagger. Black Warfare, Espionage International Intrigue. These are the weapons of the OSS. Today's story, recommendation from Rummel, about an American OSS agent in Italy who almost outsmarted himself, is suggested by actual incidents recorded in the Washington files of the Office of Strategic Services. A story that can now be told. here. You can't leave me here. I demand to see someone in authority. Let me out of here. Brother, that was some spot to be in. Me, Joe Donato, in a jail cell in Milan, Italy. It was crazy. Well, after a while, I got tired of yelling. So I sat down on a narrow prison cot and thought back to the way it had begun. On a train from Varese to Milan, the French underground had smuggled me from Lyon across Switzerland, and I made my way over the border. From there on, I was on my own, posing as an Italian chocolate salesman. So I sat back in my compartment, lit a European cigarette and blew smoke rings over my head to the rack, where my shortwave radio was hidden in one of the suitcases. All of a sudden, the train gave a lurch. One of my suitcases took a flying dive to the floor. It was a suitcase with a penknife scar across the leather handle. The one with the radio. I was glad I was alone in that compartment. I couldn't wait to find out if that radio was all right. You see, the case was lined with a false backing of boxes of chocolates to hide the radio. I unfastened the backing, and there was the radio. It was okay. Nothing was broken. And then before I could refasten the backing, I heard voices outside the compartment door. I didn't have time to refasten the backing. I had just enough time to slam the case shut again, slide it back up on the rack, and get back in my seat. Major, what is this? I was under the impression this compartment was reserved for me alone. There must be some mistake, Airfield Marshal. There was a mistake, all right. My mistake in picking the one compartment on the train that had been chosen for Field Marshal Ramo. Dumko, what is the meaning of this? I do not know, Senor Major. That has been a mistake, a grave mistake. Do not tell me of mistakes. This is your stupidity. You had your orders. Oh, no, no, I instructed the train guard very carefully. Be still. I will not have this disturbance, you understand? Uh, yes, Your Excellency. I, uh, I am sorry if I have been the cause of this. I... Uh, I assure you it was quite unintentional. I will take my suitcases and leave immediately. I see, see, bah, it is best. You leave. I will find you another compartment. Oh, wait. Sir. It is unnecessary, Conductor. The gentleman is already here. There is room for both of us. We Germans and Italians must share, is it not so? Oh, I, uh, uh, perhaps uh, you would uh, prefer your privacy. It, uh, <laughs> it is nothing for me to move. No, I will not hear of it. Sit where you are. Actually, I will welcome company. I detest train rides. Major, yes, your arrange Excellency. a table for me in the dining car. Yes, Your Excellency. You are stupid, Conductor. Next time, pay attention to orders. I do not know how this happened. Such a fuss over nothing. Tell me your name. Oh, my name is Donato. Giuseppe Donato, Your Excellency. Hmm. Where are you headed for, Signor Donato? Oh, I am getting off at Milano. Oh, I see. Well, we should have time to get acquainted. Be at your ease. Time to get acquainted. Great. What are we going to talk about? Maybe I could get the conversation started by saying, Herr Field Marshal Rommel, yes. it might interest you to know that I am an OSS spy. I am in Italy to radio back information on your northern supply concentrations. You say 
You are a chocolate salesman? Uh, see, si. my office is in Verona. Uh, here is my card. <laughs> well, I'm not in the market for chocolate. You may put the card back. Oh, here. You drop this. Your medical classification in the fascist army. Uh, grazie. That uh, was a great disappointment to me, Your Excellency, oh, but yes. uh, you see, an old back injury kept me out of the army. You must not blame yourself for something you cannot help. Still, it is a great disappointment. Yes, I understand. That. Your Excellency. Yes, Major. Your table in the dining room, it is ready. Ah, yeah. Lock it. I will return soon, Signor Donato. We will continue our conversation. We had talked ten minutes, and I aged ten years. I wondered if I should change compartments before he came back. No, 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 that might seem suspicious. I looked out of the window. The green, rolling hills of citrus and olive trees didn't tell me anything. I just crossed my fingers and hoped we were coming into Milan soon. You, Donato. Uh, uh, see, uh, what do you want with me? I do not want anything with you. Field Marshal wants to see you, and you'd better be quick about it. Oh, see. Si, no, si. no, leave your suitcases. Just come with me, quickly. You, uh, wanted to see me, Your Excellency? Yes. Sit down. There, opposite me. Oh, grazie, grazie. I thought about you. After I left the compartment, Signor Donato. She? See. Si. <laughs> would you care to join me for coffee, Signor? It would be my pleasure. Coffee with Field Marshal Ramo. <laughs> Wait till I tell the gang back home about this, I thought. There was a man across the aisle. A dapper little guy with a waxed mustache. He and Ramo nodded to each other. And then the dapper little old guy kept watching me. Watching me. Yeah. I never can get used to this Italian coffee with all its chicory. I don't suppose I ever will. I would naturally have a fondness for it. I have had it all my life. <laughs> Where was your home originally? Uh, in Urbino. Oh, the birthplace of Raffia. My family is still living there. Yeah. Would you like to see some snapshots, Your Excellency? Oh, yes, <laughs> I would very much. Uh, they are right here in my wallet. Ah, uh, here, you see, uh, that uh, little farm in the valley? Oh, uh, it yes. is here, you see? Ah, this is a huge image. Uh, the, uh, sorry, the, uh, the pretty child. Oh, who is she? Oh, uh, my sister Francesca. <laughs> she looks very much like you, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was interesting very that uh, Rommel thought the kid in the picture looked very like me. Very like you indeed. The snapshots had been made by OSS photographers, and an early picture of me had been superimposed over the negative. A very attractive family group. You know, Signor Donato, I've taken quite a fancy to you. Oh, uh, tell me, uh, these, these, these chocolates you sell, uh, are they any good? Oh, see, si, see, si, they're very good. Not, uh, not, uh, as Oh, no, 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 no. no? Uh, well, uh, surely, well, one or two of them would not be missed, huh? Is it all right with you if I send my adjutant to get one of the suitcases? Yes? Uh, we Germans and Italians must share. Uh, no, no. I, 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 oh, it's, it's perfectly all right. Only uh, I will get them myself oh, for no, you. Oh, no, no. I will have no need. Major. Yes, yes. Uh, go to the compartment and bring one of the signor's keys. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, No, no. Uh, it is foolish to send him. Senor. I can easily go myself, you no, see. No, no. I insist. We will have so little time for talking before the train stops at Milano. I had no choice. I had to sit there and sweat it out. Just pray that the adjutant brought back the right case. I felt as if there were a band of steel around my head that kept getting tighter and tighter. What is it, my friend? Are you not feeling well? Oh, it is uh, very hot in here, is it not? Oh, uh, yes, it is, unfortunately, yes. Perhaps I should call the conductor and have it. Oh, here. The major returns with your sample case. The first thing I looked at when the Major put the case in my lap was the handle. There was a long scar in the leather. It was the one with the radio. <laughs> you know, I've always had a fondness for chocolates. <laughs> well, come, open it. 
Well? Uh, the, 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 the catch, it, uh, it seems to be stuck. <laughs> well, surely you can fix it. Oh, see, si, see, si, of course. Uh, that is, uh, I will try. Give it to me. Uh, what, what? I have an excellent little pen knife. Perhaps I can adjust the lock. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I, I will get it in a moment. I, I'm no, sure. I, I, I can Milano. Wait. This station is Milano. Oh, Milano. Uh, th that is my stop, Your Excellency. Oh, so soon. What a pity. Uh, well, if, uh, if you wish, I, I will stay on till the next station. Open oh, this no. for you. Take a bus back. No, 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 no. no. I would not think of it. It is too kind of you to suggest it. But we must say, I'll be the same. Arrivederle, Field Marshal Rommel. It has been a great honor. I hurried back to the compartment to get my coat and hat. And then on an impulse, I grabbed the other case off the rack, and as the train stopped, I turned and ran back toward the dining room. Senor, senor, this is Milan. I know, I know. I'm getting off in a minute. Uh, un momento. Uh, here, Field Marshal. Senor Donato, I did not expect to see you back. Uh, Your Excellency, if you will permit me, uh, here is this this case of chocolates. Oh, for you. Oh, senor. You see, no. the, the, the lock works oh, now. <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, grazie. Molte grazie. If I pass through Milano, I will look you up. I don't know where I'll be staying, sir. It is not difficult for the police to find the man. I'll feed the same. And with this pleasant thought, I left him. Glad to get off that train. You don't need OSS training to tell you when someone's following you. It's an instinctive feeling you get. I started to walk a little faster. And the footsteps behind me quickened, too. I passed a small coffee shop, and through the reflection in the window, I could see coming after me the man in the dining car who had never taken his eyes off me. The dapper little guy with the mustache. He and Rommel had nodded to each other. Was it a signal? Did Rommel just try to string me along? I broke into a run. Senor, stop! I didn't intend to stop until I got wait, past that wait. gate. Then maybe I could wait, lose him in the crowd. I should wait! Wait! Stop him, somebody! Help us! God, what are you doing? Open that gate! I am sorry, Signore. This gate is closed. Now use the south but, gate. But I can't... I, I am sorry. This gate is closed. Signor. Signor, I've had such trouble catching up with you. Uh, uh, who, who are you? Uh, allow me. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the Count Pietro Imperiale. What do you want with me? Well, I... Noticed you were having coffee on the train with Field Marshal Rommel himself. I'm a great admirer of the Marshal, and I have a nodding acquaintance with him. Oh, si? Uh, what has that to do with me? Well, I happen to know, Signor, that Rommel does not make friends easily, and so when I saw you two together, I... Well, amico, would you do me the extreme honor of joining me at my palace for dinner this evening? It would be a great pleasure to entertain a good friend of Rommel's. As the long black limousine drove up to the palace, I felt like a visitor in the Middle Ages. The gray stone steps were hollowed with age. This way, senor. The lower windows were blazing with light. And two torches set in brackets flanked the doors. <laughs> quiet, Bobo, quiet, quiet. The floors are made of colored marble. On the walls hung ancient tapestries with scenes from the Old Testament. I walked through, past the line of servants. My mouth was open at all this grandeur. And I walked right into a suit of armor. Hey, excuse me. <laughs> Come, amico mio. Dinner is waiting. Ah, that uh, was a delicious dinner. Grazie, Cant Imperiale. Molto bene, molto bene. I'm delighted you enjoyed it. Now... We will sit here in the library and uh, talk of Rommel. Cigaro? Uh, grazie, no. Tell me, what was he like? What uh, 
did he say? Oh, we merely exchanged pleasantries. Uh -huh. Great leader, great chief. Once when he was in Milan, I, I planned a reception talk for him. I kept looking but around the huge library. He was unable to attend. What a setup for Madison basketball Graven games. Court. However, well, one day, this was being introduced to Milan in a royal way. Uh, what was that? A little brandy? Oh, no, no, brandy. <laughs> what is it, Bobo? What's the matter? Good evening, Count Imperiali. They told me you were here. There, you see, Bobo, it is only Antonia. Come, come, my dear. I would, uh, I would like you to uh, meet a friend. See, si. Signor Giuseppe Donato, great friend of Rommel's. My, I am impressed. Piacere. The pleasure is mine. <laughs> che bella questa ragazza, no? My secretary is very pretty, non è vero? Your Lordship, there is a call on your private phone in the small library. Oh, si. I will return. It will give you two a chance to uh, get acquainted, huh? Quiet, Bobo. <clears throat> eh, molte bella, signorina. You are very pretty. Count Imperiale was right. <laughs> Did you find yourself forced into that compliment, signor? Oh, no, 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 not at all. We Italians are proud of our beautiful women, and it is impossible... Not to notice how well you represent them. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you live? In Milano? Uh, uh, no, no, no. I'm here uh, on business. <laughs> Where are you staying? Oh, I, I only arrived today. I've made no plans yet. Uh, you uh, are the Count secretary? His personal secretary. Since the Count has passed on, I attend to all arrangements for his banquets and receptions as well as his personal correspondence. Oh, oh, I see. He is a grand signor. I am very fond of him. <laughs> I remember how disappointed he was when Field Marshal Rommel failed to attend a reception he planned for him. Oh, I, I know. He, he told me that. He uh, is a great admirer of Rommel. So am I. Tell me about him, signor. Does he intend to come to Milano soon? Uh, perhaps we can plan something else in his honor. I uh, don't know his intentions. <laughs> perhaps he is returning to Africa immediately. I uh, don't know that either. <laughs> well, I see you two have become acquainted, huh? Molto bene. Your Lordship, since the Signor is staying in Milano, shall I give him the name of a good hotel? Hotel? With 40 rooms here, most of them empty? I should say not. You will stay here, amico mio, as long as you want. Grazie. Molto gentile. I'm very grateful. They gave me a suite to myself with a tremendous canopy bed and a sculptured rug on the floor. Through the casement window, I could see the Piazza Sundial, the narrow streets of Milan, and off in the distance, the church of Santa Maria della Grazia. Who has got a look for an American spy in a setup like that, hmm? Who's made the order? Every night I patted the radio in the suitcase and hoped I'd have a message to send back soon. A few days later, Count Imperiale asked me to walk to his office with him. Ah, this Italian summer makes me feel ten years younger. You know, if I were 20 years younger, I would be more attentive to that dark-eyed secretary of mine. <laughs> oh, I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, she, uh... She seems to have taken an interest in you. Oh, that's so? Si, si, si. She's a keep on to ask questions about you. Oh, uh, see, si. You still have not told me why you want to see me at your office. I uh, refuse to speak business at home. I never do. And uh, your business? I, I don't know that either. You will. Soon enough. Come. My office is in the municipal building across the square. I followed him across the square over the fat pink cobblestones. Everywhere around me were black-shirted fascisti. I wondered if my good luck so far had made me too sure of myself. I followed him up the stairs to the municipal building, down the narrow corridor, 
And we stopped at a door third from the end. And then I know what his business was. Superintendent of police. Brego, I beg of you, please go in. Uh, Count Imperiale, I, I don't understand. Now you know my business. I am superintendent of police. Often an unpleasant occupation. Come in. I said come in. That's right. I uh, wanted to see you here because it's necessary for us to have a little talk about you and the police. What have I to do with the police? How would you like to work for me? Now, come, come, come. Don't look so startled. Work for you? Uh, as a member of the police? Yeah, but of course. Perhaps this communication from Rommel will explain. Grazie. As you can see, it's a request from him for me to locate you in Milano and offer you this position. He's obviously very fond of you, great Chief Rommel, and he knows how badly you feel about your medical classification in the army. Uh, uh, I don't know what to say. Well, <laughs> just to say you accept. Ordinarily, of course, I would have to make extensive research into your background before offering you this position, but... Uh, <laughs> a personal recommendation from Rommel hardly makes that necessary. But what do you say, amico mio? What do you think I said? I said yes in a hurry. And when I left the office later, I had a badge in everything. Ever since I boarded the train at Varese, I had one bad scare after another. But so far, nothing had happened. I was beginning to feel I led a charmed life. Until I got back to my suite at the palace. Quiet, Bobo. Antonia! What are you doing with that suitcase? These are excellent chocolates. Will you have one? What right have you in here? I was curious about you. I found out I had reason to be curious. I'd like you to meet two friends, Giacomo and Mario. For the first time I saw them. Two men standing half hidden in the shadows of the big room. And on the chair before Antonia was my suitcase. She turned it around so I could see the inside. The backing was off. The radio was gone. Who are these men? What is this? No, no, Paura. Do not be afraid. Antonia was right when she said we were friends. But... This uh... was a foolhardy place to leave your radio, Americano. I found a better hiding place. In the wall safe of an unused room. In the palace. <laughs> it is all right, Signor Donato. We are partisans. Members of the underground. You just, uh, you just stand there and tell me this? Why not? Your American radio has given us proof of who you are. No doubt you want proof of who we are. Escorta. I'm listening. We will tell you all that you came here to find out. All you have to do is to ask and we will answer. We will answer even before you ask. The Nazis are using northern Italy as a supply base for the Africa Corps. In fact, Rommel is expecting air reinforcements to leave here at the end of the week. How many planes? Seventy-five bombers. Where are they? In a field at Caravaggio, ten miles west. You, uh, you emptied my valise. There, uh, was an altitude bomb there. Did you find it? Is this what you mean? Yes. Is there anyone in the underground who can duplicate it? <laughs> the professor of chemistry in the University of Milano is uh, a friend. What? You see, if you remove the pin from these bombs and plant them in an airplane, they'll explode automatically when the ship gains altitude. We will let you know when you can see the fireworks. Oh, oh, and uh, another bit of information. See, si. It uh, might interest you to know that uh, you have been talking to a member of the Fascisti secret police. <laughs> Ah, Antonia, you look more lovely than ever this evening. Buona tarda, my lord. And grazie. And you, amico. Where are you going? Uh, for a drive, sir. <laughs> mm, how wonderful it must be to be young again, especially in the summer. Well, go and enjoy yourselves. Oh, we will. We are sure we will. <laughs> It is fortunate the Count did not invite himself along. You're sure we can see everything from this hilltop? Very sure. 
When the planes take off from Caravaggio, after midnight, we will see them. It, uh, it's cool up here on this hill. Not cool enough to offer you an excuse to put your arm around me. Oh, you remember what the Count said. We are young. It is summer. Senor, this is business. Scotta. Listen. The planes. They are taking off. Any minute now. Any minute. What if something happened? What if they weren't able to plant those bombs? What if... Oh. What if, eh? <laughs> Although this seems a poor way to repay Rommel for his hospitality. Rommel didn't get his 75 Luftwaffe bombers. No sky protection, and that played a part when he was thrown back from El Alamein a short month later. The OSS continued to get total information on northern Italy, supply concentrations, troop movements, and underground activities. Each time police triangulation detected my radio antenna, I, as a member of the secret police, would lead a raid. Having first, as a member of the underground, moved it to another spot. And then one day, the Americans took over Milan. I walked into G2 headquarters to give them a personal welcome. What do you mean, just walking into my office like this? Sergeant, who is this guy? I'm sorry, Major, I couldn't stop him. By the black shirt he's wearing, whoever he is, I don't like him. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, you, you boys got me wrong. What I came to What's tell you... What's your name? Uh, Donato. Lieutenant Giuseppe... Uh, uh, Joe Donato. Uh, look, you don't understand. I'm a member of the OSS. Yeah, sure, he's a member. Look, Mac... That's enough, Sergeant. Donato, according to our list, you're a high-ranking member of the fascisti police. Thanks for giving yourself up. I'm not giving myself up. That's what you think, Mac. I tell you, I'm a member of the OSS. We have your full record, Donato. In his own reports to fascisti headquarters, Count Imperiali thought very highly of you. I don't care what he thought. And in the files, we found a personal recommendation from Rommel about you. <laughs> a personal recommendation from Rommel, and you expect us to believe you're a member of the OSS? But you, you... Take him away, Sergeant. Throw him in jail. You can't do this Have to I me. I'll running. write to my congressman. <laughs> Hey, come back! I demand to see someone in authority! Let me out of here! I stand on my constitutional rights! Let me out of here! Shut up! A week later, OSS in London sent verification on Lieutenant Joseph Donato, and an embarrassed G2 headquarters released him from jail. Thus, once again, the report of another agent closed with the words... Mission accomplished. Listen again next week for another true adventure from the files of OSS on... Cloak and Dagger. Heard in today's Cloak and Dagger adventure is Joe as Ralph Bell. Rommel, Barry Kroger, the Count, Arnold Moss, Antonia, Jan Minor, the Colonel, Raymond Edward Johnson. Others were Boris Aplin, Jerry Jarrett, and Carl Weber. The script was written by Winifred Wolfe and Jack Gordon. The music was under the direction of John Garth. Today's true OSS adventure was based on the book Cloak and Dagger by Corey Ford and Alistair McBain. This program is directed by Louis G. Cowan and Alfred Hollander under the direction and supervision of Sherman Marks. Programs, get your programs here. Action and adventure are yours tonight. $1,000 reward offers a mystery for you to solve at home for a $3,000 cash prize, followed by the corpse said, ouch, tonight's case on the saint, and then Sam Spade solves another exciting caper, searching for the bell King Solomon used to call his wives. That's tonight on NBC. Now stay tuned for High Adventure and the Big Guy on NBC. NBC.